invalid meeting area. Right. Okay. Invalid. So, gentlemen, it's uh, one thirty. I start the session. This is a uh, the study club, uh, Navident online study club. There uh, will be four speakers, uh, which is basically uh, first speaker, then will be followed by Dr. Burgess, and then Dr. Sheikh, and Dr. Zorogiannidis. Each presenter will have 15 minutes to present. I will ask uh, the attendees to write questions on the chat. You will see there's a, a chat on the control panel where you can write up uh, anything. So I'm asking not to intervene, to interject during the presentations, but allow the speaker to make his own presentation and follow by another presentation to write up the questions, and the, the question will be read by me at the end of the four speaker presentation. And there will be 15 minutes at the end of question and answers by the presenters. So without any further ado, I'll present uh, the first speaker. And uh, the first speaker, it's uh, uh, Professor Dr. Mustafa Kemal Unsel, and from Turkey. He graduated uh, in 1988 from Ankara University. He got his uh, PhD in prosthetic uh, in 1994. And basically, uh, 1999 uh, uh, associate professor, and then 2005 professor at Ankara University. In 2016, he retired from the university and is running his own clinic. He's an active member of different uh, titles, and I, I list here three of them, which is a EAO, EAD, DNS. So I will now give the word to uh, Dr. Gunsal. If you can start sharing. Uh, your screen and, uh, um, and I basically I'm now make you presenter, Dr. Kemal, so you can now start sharing your screen and start your presentation. Yeah. Yeah, you got it? That's your screen. Okay. Now, due to technical complications, I will not be able to see you, but I will share my whole screen with you. Yeah, we can see it. So, I guess, yes, I guess we can make it. Thank you very much for all the colleagues. Uh, it's a nice pleasure for me to share my time with you now. Uh, this is an immediate extraction and immediate implant surgery case. Oops. Yes, a 65-year-old woman patient attended to our clinic with pain in number 44. Uh, I just examined her, and uh, both clinically and radiographically, and the findings were as follows. A serious periapical lesion on root treated tooth number 44. I will also give a big uh, x-ray in a moment. Pain on vertical percussion and periapical lesion on the mesial root of the tooth number 46. That's the panoramic. She was having pain on ear and this teeth as well. So we need to make a treatment planning for her. We offered uh, four treatment options to her. And uh, these were extracting number 44 and to make a new bridge by including a 43, which is a regular treatment. Immediate implant surgery following extraction of 44. Extracting both uh, teeth, number 46 and 44, and immediate implantation at mentioned regions. And extracting all the uh, possible uh, 
potential hazardous teeth and make an immediate implant surgery. She preferred to have the first option, extraction of number 44 and immediate implantation of the region. So we just extracted her teeth. Uh, you know, you see the uh, soft tissue and the two remnants. And we put an immediate implant. Uh, although the patient did not feel any discomfort, following the eight week that has been waited for osteointegration, the implant did not osteointegrate it and had to be removed. Well, it's not my regular experience because uh, many cases like this heals. So I was shocked a bit as well. And then the bone loss at the region. in order to have some recovery and for me for some time to think about what to do it. And after two weeks, the healed site was like this. So the healing was not good as well. And uh, the, there was a big defect in the region. Uh, at this stage, I offered her two treatments. One, augmentation and implant surgery of the uh, same region. However, I have also informed her that uh, this can be a an extremely expensive and, you know, uh, may not be successful as well. And I also offered her to extract the 46 and 45, which was one of the treatment plans I offered earlier, and then avoid the uh, area that we lost the first implant. She preferred the second option. I mean, she let me to extract number 46 and 45 and put the implants there as well. Uh, obviously, this decision saved her some money and uh, the bone grafting issues that we all encounter every day. So I made a treatment plan. It was a Combium CT data of the patient transferred to Navident software. And uh, I planned three implants. Uh, I used trace and place protocol. The procedure is carried out without any problems. And you can see perhaps the position of the implants here. So the lower jaw tag is fixed to the mandibular incisors. The first implant is planned to be inserted at number 47. So that was not an immediate implantation case. Uh, the region was healed already. So I was very safe with that. Uh, however, the Combium CT data was declaring a grade 5 bone quality. So, uh, raising the flap, I just used a pilot burr. And following that, I did not use any uh, standard burrs, but I condensed the bone with the condensers in the surgical set. So, the implant's primary stability was 20 newtons, and I used a 12 millimeter. Uh, 4.1 diameter implant. Uh, for the, ex the teeth to be extracted, I just put of 40 style the route that I have taken well, did not have a severe uh, periapical lesion. I've, uh, to put a long -term temporary bridge with the mesial uh, route uh, be to avoid a potential also integration failure due to the contaminants of the lesion. You know, I mean, this is not always the case, but uh, I have already had a failure with this patient, so I didn't want to have any problems. So uh, here on the distal root, I used another 4.1, 12 millimeter implant as well. Now, uh, with the help of Navident, I could put a precise uh, positioning of the implant without touching the uh, periapical lesion next to it. Of course, this does not mean that I'm extremely safe uh, because the bone has canals which, can, which the uh, microbes can travel but I just took that risk. And then I placed the other implant, just uh, mesial to the left root, and did not touch the uh, area that I had to, I have lost the implant before. 
So this is the clinical view at the end of the surgery. Uh, I also put an uh, abutment connected to the implant in the middle, which has a high primary stability. I was just thinking to use a, uh, an immediate, you know, immediate uh, temporary bridge. And uh, I just put that abutment for that sake. However, I was not very comfortable with the primary stability. So I just said, well, uh, let's leave for 10 days. And I did not put the uh, bridge for 10 days. Following 10 days, I just put the temporary bridge. And I used both the mesial root and the uh, prepared teeth on number 48. And my message is, uh, with the Navidan trace and place protocol, we can use immediate implantation and we can position the implants precisely where we intend to put. Thank you very much. Now I will be leaving the full screen and try to see if you have any questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oh. Kemal. So if you can leave uh, your uh, sharing uh, of your screen. Okay. So yeah, so you can- Thank you very much. Uh, screen sharing, thanks for your presentation. Uh, li leave it, leave it, yes, screen sharing, exit. Yeah. No, 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 leave the meeting, eh? You need not leave the meeting, uh, no, just uh, screen sharing. Uh. Okay. Very good. So, I, I will present the second speaker, which is a Dr. David Burgess from UK. Is a from uh, since 1988 principal at Dental Care, Bay Dental Care in Cornwall. Is a pioneer in uh, in new technology as much as also the other presenters uh, in the field of digital dentistry, and he has been the first English clinician to adopt. Navident dynamic navigation in his, in his implant workflow. So, without any further ado, I will pass uh, the word as a presenter to Dr. Burgess, that he can now start sharing uh, his own screen and make his own presentation. There we go, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Luca, and everybody else. Um, just there we go. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the challenge that we've had um, in using dynamic navigation for full arch cases. I did my first full arch case with dynamic navigation in the very early days when uh, we were using the bone anchoring system. But I wanted to look at how to develop a system to use it with uh, trace and place, Navident 2. And so I'm going to present to you what I call the base frame concept. The challenge with full arch cases is how do we get decent planning, uh, our registration, between the CBCT scan and the real patient? How can we get accurate and precise placement of the implants and get a predictable restoration at the end of it? So the objective for me um, was to develop a system that ensures consistent, precise and predictable placement of implants in full arch cases, whether they be edentulous cases or immediate cases and to produce a final restoration that is anatomically as close to the natural dentition as is possible. Uh, and with um, the main aim as well to have the prosthesis screw retained with access cavities in palatal surfaces of the anterior teeth and the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth. So that was the objective. The solution that they came up with was to develop uh, an acrylic base frame that is fitted into the buccal sulcus uh, and a number of overlays, modular overlays, which are attached to this base frame using locators. So the modular overlays, we have a temporary bridge that we want to be putting straight onto um, the implants 
after they've been placed, uh, a radiopaque replica of that temporary bridge, something that I call a shell guide, and latterly I've developed a, a, a newer modular overlay, an occlusal register. And this is what I've called the base frame concept. So to demonstrate this, I'll just run through a case study, a 69-year-old female. She had a paving dentition. Uh, I took out four teeth from the upper right central incisor to the upper right first premolar three months earlier and provided her at that time with an immediate upper partial denture. The plan was then to uh, do a clearance of the remaining Immediate for temporary form initially with acrylic extending into the buccal sulcus and onto the palate. Uh, so once the teeth are taken out, this can be tried in directly over the sockets using the palate to help to stabilize the, the temporary bridge. We can check the occlusion, which can be adjusted as necessary, and then attach the base frame to the temporary bridge. So in the lower picture, there you can see this acrylic frame attached onto the temporary bridge. The radio opaque replica has a dual purpose. It's one is for treatment planning. So it's an exact replica of the temporary bridge. And on the CBCT scan, it will show the position of the teeth as they would be with the temporary bridge. We can also use it to register uh, between the real patient to the virtual CBCT scan um, and then use it for tracing. So instead of tracing real teeth, uh, as we do with trace and place, we can trace the outline of the radio opaque teeth once they're fixed to the base frame. The shell guide, um, it's useful during surgery to confirm satisfactory implant emergence position, uh, and it can be used as a special impression tray for fixture head impression. So this is all, these are all important steps in the predictable um, production of the final bridge as well. It's held in front by the temporary bridge initially with the opposing teeth dictating the occlusion. So assuming we have a full set of lower teeth, we are, or even a, enough to stabilize the, the, the bite, just ask the patient to bite firmly, hold the um, temporary bridge in exactly the position we want, and then with the base frame attached to the temporary bridge, it is secured using horizontal bone screws or small diameter implants. The central small diameter implant has a modded attachment, modified attachment for a jaw tracker, if you wish to use that, or in the maxilla, we can use the head tracker. Plowable composite is then used to fix the base frame to the mini implants, the small diameter implants, to ensure passive fixation. So the holes for um, the mini implants are larger than the head of the mini implant so that there's no canting or strain put onto the base frame so that it isn't moved in the placement of the mini implants. And there's also a choice of fixation points, which means that should we find that um, one particular site doesn't give secure fixing, we can use a different site. So this overcomes a lot of the problems that we see with um, static guides, full arch static guides. The base frame then, as you can see on the top picture, um, is just a, an acrylic horseshoe that allows the modular overlays to be connected in identical positions. So it gives us an unobstructed field of working. There's no barriers to visibility or irrigation. And we can attach, in this case, I'm showing some ring fiducials for an alternative method of registration. And I'll talk you through that in a second. So this case, we did use the ring fiducials. It was one of the first cases ever to be used successfully. Um, and uh, once we've got the uh, base frame with the ring fiducials attached and the radio opaque replica clicked on top, we can then take our working CBCT scan. So this is a second scan. The first scan is taken just to do a feasibility study to make sure the patient is suitable for 
um, full arch treatment, but this is now our working scan with the teeth missing. Um, the radio opaque replica shows the teeth clearly for planning implant position and for tracing. And the ring fiducials also appear on the scan, giving an alternative option for registration. So we go now through the usual steps of calibrating the tracer tip um, and then calibrating the using the calibration device and the jaw tracker. So registration with the ring fiducials, if uh, I know we're soon uh, likely to have Navident 2.2 available, but Navident 2.2, 2.1 rather, has the option to select the dimple fiducials mode. Um, and by clicking onto that, it gives us the opportunity to mark a minimum of three ring fiducials for registration. In this case, I selected four. And the registration is done simply by touching the center of each ring fiducial with the tracer tip. So this registration takes less than 20 seconds. It's very quick, very simple. Um, alternatively, we can register by tracing. So by fixing the radio opaque replica back onto the space um, uh, frame, we mark three to six reference points as we would do for uh, standard trace in place, trace around the surface of the radio opaque teeth, um, and the um, camera registers 100 points per traced tooth and registers by uh, trace in place. So we can check the uh, verification by placing the tip of the drill uh, into the center of a ring fiducial, or we can place it onto the head of a mini implant. And these gives us, gives us verification that the tracing and the registration in either way has been successful. We can then place our implants to plan using dynamic navigation. So the implants are placed freehand and the big plus with cases like this is we have the ability to modify the plan at any time and still monitor the implant site preparation. So I quite often will change the position depending on what I'm seeing and feeling during surgery, but um, I'm still able to watch the pathway of the drill as I'm doing it. The shell guide helps to confirm the emergence profile. So that can be clicked and unclicked to the base frame at any time. And we can check the positioning of each implant. Uh, and the implants, in this case, were some into sockets and some into heel sites using dynamic navigation. So I place six implants here. Um, now this base frame, uh, sorry, the shell guide also is then useful to act as a special tray for an open tray fixture head impression. Um, and once the impression has set, the base frame is disconnected from the bone and removed while still attached to the shell guide with the impression inside. Implant analogues are then attached to the transfer posts and the working model is created with the implant analogues embedded into the uh, plaster of Paris and the base frame attached to the model in exactly the same position as it is in the mouth. This gives us uh, an ability now to transfer the temporary bridge back onto the model in exactly the same position as it was in the mouth, clicking down onto the base frame. Once we've managed to, to do that, the technician is able to then to um, create the screw access holes accurately with the temporary bridge still fixed onto the base frame. Once the screw access, screw access holes have been um, created, the temporary bridge can be attached to temporary cylinders using a, a liquid acrylic. Once that's done, the flanges and the pallet can be removed to create the streamlined temporary bridge. So this is now no longer attached to the base frame, but it is now in the exact position that it was uh, in the mouth when we started. So the temporary bridge can then be fitted in the mouth in that exact pre-implant placement position. And as you can see here, we've managed to achieve the screw access holes 
in the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth and the palatal of the anteriors. There's a minimal need for adjustment of occlusion um, and the temporary bridge on immediate implants in one visit using dynamic navigation. So this was a, a solution to um, using dynamic navigation in these full arch cases. This new modular overlay that I've just started using uh, helps to uh, locate the lower full arch um, base frame where we have a full upper, um, and in this case, a full upper fixed bridge. And it's a bit like a suck down splint that links onto the base frame and locates everything uh, in position as we want it. So in summary, the base frame ensures that we have trans transferable information for precise planning, precise placement, and precise restoration. And it can also save a lot of time when we come to do the permanent bridge a few months down the line. Um, as we already have the working model, all we need is a soft tissue update, uh, and we have the implants uh, analogs in the model ready to go for the next stage. Thank you very much, and I'll now pass you back to Luca. So thanks, Dr. Burgess. I start now uh, sharing my screen, and uh, I will uh, introduce you uh, the uh, next speaker, who is uh, Dr. Sheikh Anwar Hussein from uh, UAE, from Abu Dhabi. He is uh, from 1988, a fellow of dental surgery at the Royal College of Surgeons of England. And uh, since 2011, is a consultant uh, oral surgeon and implantologist, besides being managing director at Marigold Dental and Orthodontic Clinic. He is, as well as uh, the other speakers, is a pioneer in new technology in the field of digital dentistry. And he's been the first clinician in the Emirates about Navident dynamic navigation in his implant workflow. So I equally bestow the role of a presenter to Dr. Sheikh, who is now capable and able to start sharing his laptop screen and make his own presentation. So, Dr. Sheikh, you are welcome to present to us. Thanks. Thank you so much, Luca. I hope everybody can hear me. Yeah, we can. And uh, this, I hope everybody can see the slides clearly. Yes, we can. Yeah, fully, fully. Dr. Sheikh, we cannot hear you right now. Dr. Sheikh, the audio, I think it doesn't, uh, can you, can you try? Yeah, we can hear you, we can see the picture, but we cannot hear you. Okay, so Tom, can you confirm me that uh, you cannot hear Dr. Sheikh? Okay, okay, I understand. So um, let's see if we can, uh, in, uh, in a few seconds, fix it with Dr. Sheikh. Otherwise, I will find myself in the position to pass the word to Do Dr. Zorgianidis. Okay, so let's do this. Let's first pass the word to Dr. Zorogianidis and try and eventually if you, Dr. Sheikh, can fix it, uh, the audio issue. <clears throat> Let me uh, start, present you uh, Dr. Zorogianidis. Uh, Zorogianidis is a uh, um, graduated uh, at uh, Athens University, comes from Greece, is a specialist and it's a diplomat at ICOI 
besides being member of at EAO, ITI, AAID, CAI, and DNS, and is uh, the first Greek clinician uh, to adopt uh, Navident uh, dynamic navigation in this implant workflow. So equally, I uh, will uh, um, bestow the um, presentation rights to Dr. Zorigenidis. Now, and he's uh, now capable uh, to start sharing uh, his own computer. Yep. Okay, everybody sees? Everybody yeah. listens? Is okay? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Luca. Thank you very much, everyone, for this opportunity. I'm going to present you a, a, a case of a single tooth, a single tooth placement, single implant. And uh, this case has two important parts. The first one is that we tried to come and we combined uh, in, uh, we did a study, a study, a simple study, but it's an important one, using uh, altogether uh, dynamic and static guidance. So we called it Kyber Computer Guided Implant Placement by Integrated Static and Dynamic Guidance. Uh, there is a case, I'm going to show you more in a little bit later. This case was an implant in uh, number 47. We did it together with Dr. Panos Giamaropoulos, who is uh, an, uh, he's a, a great guy who is working now in the uh, University of Athens. He is a professor who was, uh, he's a bioengineer, he's not a dentist, he's a bioengineer, and he has done a lot of research, and he's a very uh, a great pioneer in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in guidance, in uh, in surgical, in, in guided surgery technology. He was uh, one of the pioneers concerning the Simplant and in Materialize. And now he's a president elect of uh, Kai Academy. You know, I'm sure you know Kai Academy. So let's proceed. The case is a simple case. It has to do with uh, replacement of a tooth in number 47. So the guy had an extraction. He is a 50 years old male. He had an extraction due to uh, tooth breakage all along the, the route. So we had an extraction five months ago and after waiting five months and having the lingual and buccal walls intact, uh, the bone was healed, has been healed. So we did a CBCT and after the CBCT, since I've been using for many years the Simplant software, I even nowadays use a, the Navident and use the Simplant altogether just to give me a little bit of uh, freedom and to check myself, to check myself with both systems. So we did a Simplant analysis, a study, and we did the Navident study, and then we, th we thought that we would like to combine this study with a static guidance. So we exported an STL file from the Navident style and we constructed, manufactured with the help of Panos Dimadopoulos, two guides, one right and one wrong. So what, what I, I mean with one right, one wrong, I'm going to show you. We wanted to test the accuracy of both systems the static navigation that we all know for many years, the dynamic navigation, and to combine them. In one case, both. So, you see here the analysis, the study, uh, a snapshot of the Simplant, of the Simplant analysis. And here you see the snapshot of Navident. Here you can see guide one, which is the right guide, we made it without deviation. We made it as the, uh, the data came from the STL file that we ex ex exported from Navident. And here you see the guide number two, which is the guide with deviation, the wrong guide. We made it on purpose 
the, this had a deviation that went distally, a little bit distally, and went with a buccal lingual uh, direction. The first guide was made using uh, the MIMICS materialized software, and the second guide was made using the access guide from Anpa Medical by Dr. Uh, Dr. Philippe Tardier. You all know Philippe Tardier. So, here I show you both guides, guide one, guide two, in place in the mouth. The two softwares that you used. So we start calibrating the tracer tip. And at this point, I want to make you know, know that we have a partial CBCT. Due to a mistake that the radiologist department of that lab that we sent the patient, there we had a, a partial CBCT. So uh, we had to do with something that was less than a full, a full mouth. And this has to do with something very important it's the second lesson that we got from this case. I'm going to show you later on. And we start doing this, and through the accuracy test, there is this point of the left lateral incisor where there is an inaccuracy. Please remember this point in a few moments, and I will explain. Remember this point. This point, I missed it. I didn't notice that this had an inaccuracy because Later on, going testing, for instance, on this, on the molar, on the premolar, wherever I went, it was precise. So I proceeded and I calibrated the drill axis, I calibrated the drill tip, and so on. I tried to verify, and but the verification had to do with the very right side. I didn't go, that was a mistake, I didn't go to the left side. Please remember once again that I had the partial CBCT. So I tried at the K9, I try at the second molar, I try on the first molar, and everything seems okay. And then I apply the guide without deviation, the right guide. And I, I, I expect to see a, a, a very nice picture having to do with uh, accuracy both in our construction and our plan but i get this the guide does not match the plan so i the first thought was that uh, the problem had to do with the design of the guide so i go on and recalibrate the drill twice one time two times and getting all CBCT. So I retrace, and after retracing all four points, I go back and do the accuracy check view. We are exactly at the very point of the left lateral inspector. And here you can compare, compare the after and the before. Before I was inaccurate and after I was accurate. This was the only point that showed to me, but I didn't pay attention in the very beginning. So after that, I go and check again and check again. Here we are on the second molar, premolar, and here we are on the K9, and so on. And so by placing guide number one, the one that was the right guide, we get this picture. The picture shows that we are okay. We have a slight deviation that was due to the sleeve, that the sleeve was a little bit loose. And I, uh, due to my hand movement, was about 0.5 millimeters and 0.2 at the angle degrees. So I just put this to complete.
let's use freehand after that using only Navident. And after pilot drilling, that's done, and I get this result. The result sheds, shows that we were accurate in Further on, the use of hybrid guiding procedures to, in order to investigate potential benefits. We already are doing this as a second study in this. I thank you very much from Greece. So, is everyone listening to me? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Luca. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. For, for presenting uh, uh, this to us. I'll, uh, I will uh, I start- Do something with my screen, huh? Okay, here yeah. it is. So I will uh, pass okay. the presentation uh, back to Dr. Sheikh. Um, so, Dr. Sheikh, uh, um, I again briefly mention him as a is the first uh, Navident user in the Emirates. He works and lives in Abu Dhabi, and uh, he works and lives on uh, with his uh, uh, clinic, which is at uh, the Marigold Dental and Orthodontic Clinic. I will. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. Sheikh uh, managed to make his uh, uh, his own uh, uh, connection. So I bestow the presentation right uh, back to Dr. Sheikh. And now, Dr. Sheikh, uh, you can start presenting uh, to us. Thanks. So, uh, Dr. Sheikh, we cannot hear you. So, if Shukla, eventually, if Shukla, you can uh, connect with your mobile and allow Dr. Sheikh speak uh, through your mobile. So, Shukla, if you can hear me. If you can uh, join uh, this session and uh, allow Dr. Sheikh to be able to communicate. Okay. So um, we, we cannot hear you, Dr. Sheikh, unfortunately. Um, so what, what um, if, if Shukla can, uh, can listen to, to me, eventually can uh, join. I see the name is uh, maybe entering uh, the conference. And... Um, Shukla is trying, yeah, Shukla is trying to enter. So uh, let's give him uh, one minute uh, to make uh, this attempt and, uh, and be capable eventually uh, to, to join us. Uh, um, Shukla uh, stay, is staying right now in Abu Dhabi with Dr. Sheikh and eventually we we do have a chance to uh, to have him uh, both of them uh, on uh, on this uh, on this conference call. Uh, 
Ok. Eh... Ok, let's, um, yes, uh, as, a, as a Tom suggesting, uh, Dr. Shaky, you can dial uh, using a, uh, the, the phone instead of the computer. If you dial using uh, the phone, there's a, an international toll free, free number that you can dial, and eventually you can, uh, you can, you can call uh, and, and provide us with the, uh, so it's, Dr. Sheik is uh, dialing. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I do have, I do have a couple of questions myself uh, to the speakers. So, uh, my my first question uh, why we waiting uh, for dr shake uh, being capable to enter the the video conference i do have uh, one question uh, uh, for dr kemal ansel and one for dr burges so the first question uh, is to dr ansel and my question is uh, based on your experience and you showed us a, a, a amazing uh, case of a post extraction where it was a very uh, limited space between the implant and the adjacent tooth. According to your experience, where would be, you know, the uh, best area of use of Navident in your hands? Well, I think in precise conditions, it's a big help because uh, you never know what you do with your free hands. I mean, in, in a situation like that, I'm I'm still have some uh, you know question marks in my mind, uh, but it's not due to Navident. It's due to my dentistry. I mean, leaving a root with a periapical lesion there as a temporary uh, support was it something logical? I, I'm still thinking about it, but thinking about the positioning side, I think it's a big uh, help. Yeah. Okay. Thanks and uh, thanks for I mean, the amazing uh, pictures that uh, you share you shared with us. I do have uh, a question also for Dr. Burgess regarding uh, he showed us uh, uh, you know this the, the methodologies is following uh, for treating a total uh, edential patient, which was uh, 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 incredibly clear and uh, and logically uh, you know developed. Um, you've been exposed uh, to to the new protocol. Uh, trace and place protocol uh, for total edential patient. Uh, how you envisage that might affect uh, uh, your um, uh, your um, your, uh, your clinical protocol, and what would be eventually, uh, as you can foresee, the benefits of the of the new protocol, new total edential protocol. So. Um... We're talking about um, being able to take the CT scan with bone screws uh, yes. or little markers. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, I believe that there's going to be something very exciting in 2.2. So I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'm due to have the, um, the two, uh, Navident 2.2 um, loaded in tomorrow. Okay. Um, I, I believe that, uh, I mean, uh, would be nice. Uh, when we're gonna uh, organize a, a second reviews in the ring visuals is not sorry Luca no no sorry keep keep going sorry that's okay I was just gonna say uh, I think the ring fiducial yeah that's okay the the ring fiducials um were were trialed uh, as um uh, just as a prototype but they're not actually going to be um, carried on, I believe. Uh, so they've, it's all about, in the first instance, is finding a, an accurate way to register. So you need to be able to register where you don't have um, sufficient tracing points or teeth. Um, and so I have actually successfully registered by tracing a ridge as well. Uh, but you have to be quite accurate about which area you're tracing when you do that. Um, and not all ridges are very easy to, to run the trace at all over. But the, the new protocol, um, yes, it, it ticks all the boxes, 
but it um, we would need to I'd need to have a look at it as how we would use that for planning the case. So what I developed was something that you could use to plan um, to get the teeth in the right position on the scan and then to transfer that information logically through from the patient's mouth to the technician back to the mouth again. So creating this model with a frame allows us to do that. Um, but I, as I say, I'm excited to see what uh, has been developed in Canada uh, to see whether we're able going to be able to do all of those things with the new system or whether it will only um, optimize the registration. So that's that's what I, I'm waiting to find out. Yeah, so that, I think I, would, I was simply saying that uh, would be nice and interesting for everybody if you're going to place and put together a case uh, and therefore compare with the, your, your clinical experience, uh, you know, this new protocol, compare it to what you've been uh, doing lately for treating uh, total, yes. total angel patient. I think that would be logically a nice experience that we're going to be, uh, you know, longing uh, for, for you to share. I, I do have a question. I'm looking for yeah, I do have a question. Also for I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and, and the question is uh, referring uh, to uh, the fact that uh, he, he logically he's been using uh, study guides and uh, the case he presented uh, was uh, comparing uh, the level of accuracy, uh, you know, on uh, uh, artificially flowed guide with, uh, you know, a, 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 right, a right guide. So based on your experience, uh, now that you are using uh, uh, you know dynamic navigation what would be where the area where you clinically will uh, adopt uh, you know a study guide uh, rather than uh, using a uh, a dynamic navigation tool like like navident uh, first of all i want thank you for the question uh, first of all i want to make clear that i have done a very few cases in my life having to do with static guidance uh, most of the cases have to be were just the study. I was using and I am using Simplant just to 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 find my way through, even if it's a single tooth or uh, it's a three three implants or it's a full mouth. And I always make landmarks having to do with a, a tooth or a root or a kind of. Uh, ridge eminence or uh, something that's going uh, like a, like a socket or something and i always counted distances from two from two that's the way i always tried to to, to place the implants i am used to it so uh, there are a few cases that i've done with static guidance most of the cases that i've done in static guidance were uh, where I had uh, some colleagues and we were together doing some cases of their own and so on. So uh, for now, I don't think that I am going to need the static guidance because uh, I tested Navident in many cases and it's very, very accurate. It has, the only thing that has to do is, for instance, if you're right-handed and you work on the left side, on the left hand side, on the upper or, or the lower, you have to be more careful where you place your tag and where you place your hand and how you use your 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 contra ankle and whatever you hold in your hand. You have to 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 to, to acquire some something uh, a new experience. You have to to adapt. That that's the only difficulty because Navident is very accurate. That's what I got from the from the cases that I done. I don't know if you discovered your 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 question. No, no thanks. No, thanks for for this sharing. Uh, I um I again uh, invite uh, uh, the audience to write up their questions using uh, the chat tool on the control panel. So uh, be aware that uh, you do have a, a chance to uh, write up oh, your questions. Does. And uh, I want to try to go back with uh, Dr. Sheke. Dr. Sheke, can you... Can you hear me, Luca, now? Yeah, that's... Luca? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can hear you. Now... Luca, we... you can hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. So, okay. So, so. Back, back the word to you, and uh, I'll... Uh, can you start... see the slides now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Everything is clear? Everything is clear. 
the stage is to you. Yeah, and everybody can hear me. Just raise your thumbs up, please. Give yes, me your thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah, yes. I can see Tom hearing me. Good, 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 good. Well, so welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> All right. So my patient today is basically uh, a, again a 60-year-old uh, female uh, who's, who has the standing upper six teeth only and uh, with a compromised bridge. So basically, she had something like this situation, wherein she had a compromised bridge in the center and uh, periodontally poor. She had a very badly decayed upper left molar, etc. And uh, this was when we first started. Initially, I had planned and I had done the lower teeth and I'd given her three implants and the denture, which you will see, temporary denture, which you will see in the next slide. And then for the upper jaw, I had planned to remove the bridges. So we go one by one. This was the case which I presented, I mean, which, which is for presentation, like I said. And this was her clinical status. You can see the lower denture that is there. This was given as an immediate denture following three implants initially. So the second part, of, uh, as per patient's request, was to go for the upper one. So the plan was to remove the upper two bridges and then do a cone beam CT with the six anterior standing teeth, which were all heading for extractions. So I, I, I managed to do that and then I decided to use this stable canine. I wonder if you can see an orange spot on the upper left canine. You can. So I wanted to use this canine to attach the jaw tracker. The reason being that, I mean, there were none of them which could really, I could use as uh, with composite to, to get a good uh, jaw tracker fixation. So I used this dispensable tooth. I made a hole in the tooth after anesthesia, of course, and, and bonded the jaw tracker there. And I got an excellent passive fit for the jaw tracker, which was absolutely stable for further uh, tracing, et cetera. Uh, then I, my, my, my plan was again, to the, the jaw tag was fixed to the upper left canine to the hole and the other five teeth after the cone beam CT were identified for registration. All the five teeth, which is these, the other five teeth that you see were identified for registration. So this was the jaw tracker, which I have seated on the canine, as you can see. And I got an excellent fit and uh, the jaw tracker was not moving at all. This was a little bit closer picture of the same. Subsequently, I did the jaw uh, track uh, place and place uh, protocol. I registered the teeth and I wanted, to, I did the first implant on the upper right molar region using uh, on the upper right first molar, but I used the standing teeth for the accuracy check. So which I did get, as you can see in the following slide, where you can see the accuracy is very good on the canine. And I used this and completed the first implant using Navident. Subsequently, my plan was to extract the upper right canine and the upper right premolar, uh, no, lateral incisor, but part of the my my part of the slide is missing here because I can you see that? Just give me half a minute, please. If you can move that, yes. All right, okay. Anyway, I can see that. So uh, subsequently, I I re removed the upper right canine at the upper right premolar, but this time the extraction was not very straightforward. It was a little bit with trauma because the teeth were very brittle. So instead of planning the uh, implant and placing the implant with Navident, I proceeded to do it without Navident in this case, just to get uh, you know the work going because the patient also was getting a little bit restless naturally when she's undergoing all this much work. Then after that, my uh, plan was to extract the upper right incisor and use the same uh, for, for the placement of immediate upper implant, 
using the left side central and the lateral incisor for the accuracy check. Again, I went back and used them because I'm extracting one by one and using the remaining teeth for the accuracy check. Then the upper left central incisor was extracted and immediate implant was done using Navidin and using canine for the accuracy check. Subsequently, I removed the jaw tracker, I removed the canine and went on to do the other implants without Navidin. So I managed to do three implants with Navidin and three implants without. I could have done all of them with Navidin, but the patient also was showing some signs of restlessness, et cetera. So I did not uh, proceed further with that. And this was how it was started. This was the post uh, X-ray after we removed the bridge. This was the condition of the teeth after we removed the bridge. As you can see, the same slide before then. This is after I took the cone beam CT and transferring this to the uh, Navident software, wherein I go for planning of the upper jaw, the usual protocol, get, uh, get, getting the panoramic curve done, and identifying the six teeth, the, the five teeth. Mind you, I have identified all the other five teeth except the canine, which I was going to use for a jaw tracker. Subsequently, this is the uh, snapshot of the uh, tracing going on. One tooth, second tooth, etc. Then the uh, accuracy check of the tracing, which I believe was very good. And then this is the X-ray of the, uh, this is the snapshot of the planned implants, which I had done prior to starting the Navident. And this was during the procedure. This was the first implant which I did on the right molar we, using the Navident and using these five teeth for registration and accuracy check. These were the, all the six implants in position. And you can see, I also gave the patient uh, immediate denture, temporary denture mounted on, restored on four teeth, uh, the same way I had given it for the lower denture. Uh, the patient has undergone uh, Im implants in this region now with Navidin, which is for the uh, subsequent uh, treatment plan. And then my uh, take home message is basically simple. We, I, we, we try to use the available standing teeth to the best of the ability to trace for Navident. In case of expendable teeth, use one of them to attach the jaw tag firmly without the possibility for movement during surgery. And this can be done in upper and lower jaw, where sometimes we do have the, the teeth which are expendable. We can bond, uh, bond the jaw tag to that one. And then finally, trust your Navident and have a peace of mind. This is a really important take home message I would like to give. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. So, stay healthy and stay safe. safe. So, uh, I hope everybody could get the lecture yes, clearly. Speaker, thanks <laughs> for this amazing, uh, amazing case, amazing picture that you shared with us. And we are very thank you. We are thankful uh, uh, and happy that you managed to to have uh, the stage uh, for this 50 minutes. In fact, I do have uh, one question from Dr. Lapesh asking why yes. you are not using the head tracker. You showed us the case where you actually fixed uh, the jaw tracker. So this, the, the tag, which is uh, used to track uh, patient movement, uh, but usually, generally speaking, uh, is used for the mandible and not using the head tracker, which is, uh, you know, the goggles that are fixed uh, on the nose with the tracker on the forehead. That's right. Your decision was to use the 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 basically the, the the jaw tracker instead of a head tracker. Can you explain the rationale for that? Thank you. Okay, uh, this was asked by whom, Doctor? Dr. Lapesh, ask the question. Dr. Lapesh, okay, I'll give you two reasons for it. Um, first of all, placing the head tracker, uh, it's not easy if the patient is restless, because uh, in my part of the world. Uh, there is a lot of movements 
during the time of surgery. It could mean anything. It could be due to anything. But you know, there is there is those kind of moments which can lead to um, uh, you know a little bit of uh, uh, shifting of the head tracker from its place. Secondly, because I had the expendable teeth, I used the jaw tracker, which can be used by everybody for for uh, tracing and uh, tracing uh, for the upper jaw also. So I have used that before, and I, in this case, I used it on the teeth, which was to be extracted. So I thought I would get better results with this rather than depending on the head tracker. And secondly, um, uh, with with respect, Luca, the the new head tracker was not with me at that time, <laughs> which is which, which is much more you know yeah. stable. I, I was working with the old track head tracker at that time, and uh, that's the reason why I use the uh, the jaw tracker. But perfectly clear. Thank you. Thanks for the for the for the answer. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. The shall I? Let me ask you another question, which is uh, basically uh, the same I, I I asked before. In terms of your experience, you you are a, yeah. you know, an experienced user of Navident, uh, so. Where would you, um, you know, uh, or how are you using a Navident tech? Are you using a, a daily uh, for all cases, or there are specific uh, uh, treatments that you wish to uh, to adopt Navident? I'm trying to put it in daily use at this moment, but it's a little difficult because uh, two things are happening. Um, you know, uh, from the point of view of costing also, the patients who are insured, they are not, we do not get covered for splints, etc. So I'm trying to use them as much as possible, but sometimes I'm using them at my cost. The license goes at my cost. So that's one part. Secondly, I use them when I find the patients will be cooperative with it. Because, you know, it's, it's a difference between country to country of how the patient's cooperation comes when we are using Navident. And uh, sometimes they are a little bit apprehensive about the whole thing. They are not very, uh, they are very restless sometimes when I'm doing the implant with Navident. For example, you know, I study the case and then do it accordingly. But I do believe that Navident is now can be used in every uh, instance, you know. And I'm using a lot of it actually. And I'm very happy with it. Thanks, thanks. I used to uh, put the slogan, long live Navident. <laughs> so for your testimonial, uh, Dr. Shaken, uh, for, the, for the amazing pictures that you share with us. I would actually would like to leave the stage uh, to the audience. We have been uh, like uh, 21 people attending. Uh, right now we are 19 uh, people attending. Uh, so I wonder if there's uh, anyone uh, from the audience, uh, uh, and including, uh, of course, the, the speakers that... Uh, you know, presented uh, presented uh, their uh, their own experience uh, for any sort of questions to to the speakers. So I leave the uh, the, the the stage to the audience. Is there any? Anyone? I yep. I have a question for Dr. Burgess. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Dr. Burgess. How are you? Very good. Thank uh, you. I, it just it just nothing to do with the with your uh, with your beautiful presentation. I was very impressed with it. I just want to know the radio opaque teeth that you are using for your uh, splints. Yeah. Where do you get them? <laughs> the, these ones are all, um, that you saw were all custom made by the technician using barium sulfate mix. So how much? Thirty uh, percent. Uh, I'd have to check with him. Um, I can't give you an exact answer. I, I think it's less than that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, we played around with different constructions and uh, um, one of the key things to do is to make them so that they look individual. Um, and there's a, a very slight gap between the radio opaque material on each tooth. So that when we have it on the plan, they don't merge into one shape. So you yeah, this is, yeah, you this is the issue which I have had. I've, I've done it with 30% barium sulfate because I'm doing some experiment on uh, for for, uh, for Navident myself at this moment before I yeah. really publish it or let them uh, let it out. Uh, but I'm I'm trying to use the barium sulfate teeth and I'm not getting the correct outline of these teeth on for the trace registration. 
what I'll do is I'll check with the technician and I'll send you a, 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 an email and let you know exactly what he's using. Okay. That's right. That will be beautiful. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Not at all. Pleasure. Yeah. So, gentlemen, if there are no other questions from the audience, I'm uh, calling uh, the video conference. So we are bidding a sh spot on uh, time. As we, we said that we would have uh, like 10, 15 minutes after presentations for questioning, uh, which we carried out uh, uh, thoroughly. I want, first of all, uh, to thank the speakers uh, that, uh, you know, spend their time uh, in putting together the, get the case and uh, sharing their experience with all of us. We actually would like, myself, Tom and I would like to um, foster feedbacks from the audience uh, about uh, the format that has been followed uh, uh, you know, up to up to now, and uh, we for sure we wish and look forward uh, to having uh, those feedbacks uh, back to to me and to Tom. And uh, we briefly, I mentioned that uh, next week there will be also another session uh, will be held uh, in Italian. Uh, it will be again a, a, study, a online study club in Italian uh, held next week, and I will uh, pass on the information uh, via the social media. And um, I, uh, Tom, you, is there anything you want to add uh, to the things I've been uh, telling? Uh? No, we don't have the, um, the date for the next session in English yet, but as soon as we, um, we have got the information, then we will also discuss who will be the, the next speakers. And as soon as all that is set, we will contact you with uh, with the new data, the new schedule. Great. I think it uh, uh, has been a, a very good experience for me, very learning, uh, entertaining as well. Thanks to speakers, and I look forward to... Uh... Can I use this? Luca, can I use this opportunity to say hello to Tom and Luigi? Yes, of course, of course, yes. Tom, how are you? Very <laughs> good, yeah. No, yeah. It's been a long time. Yes, it's been a long time, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, take, stay safe. Take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your wishes. Uh, and I, uh, last word, I, I will use uh, a recorded uh, session. We record this session, and this session will be made available uh, through social media for those who couldn't make it uh, uh, to attend, but they do, do have still uh, interest uh, in, uh, in gaining uh, from uh, your own experiences. So thanks again. I wish you all the best, and uh, stay, you, tuned. stay tuned. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.